might ever be every other week hello to everyone out there at fancyruba.com i am michael collins and we have a very special treat for you today for our first ever webcast wcty's own jimmy lane out here talking to us about Reba. Hello, Jimmy. It's nice for you to be here today with us. Thank you, Mike. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me on the webcast. Well, thank you so much for being here. You know, I hear that you've actually met Reba once. What was that experience like? Um, first time that I met her was oh, probably 20 years ago um, at a concert, and um, I was really a big fan of hers at, at the time, and I remember going backstage, and as you know, if you go backstage, there's usually a lot of people that, that do a meet and greet, and I remember that they had to ask me more than once to leave the area. So, uh, that's <laughs> I can <laughs> imagine that's probably what I'd be like. They'd, mm. they'd have to get the security out there and mm. kind of push me off yeah. the stage. But I'm, I can only imagine she must have been very warm and welcoming. And she was. My favorite time meeting her, though, was uh, she was in the Annie Get Your Gun, and I went to see her on Broadway, and uh, okay, cool. got a chance to talk to her after that show and stuff, and she was just so excited about being a part of that Broadway Broadway show, and she just, she looked great, she looked fit, of course, because it's, being in a Broadway show is, you know, it's, uh, it's hard work. I know I can, you know, the thing that strikes me that I love the most about Reba is that she seems to be so down to earth mm -hmm. and she really hasn't lost her head in the whole right. idea of fame and she seems to be like a regular person and actually there was an article that came out a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago actually about how someone said she had wizard hair that she mm -hmm. was fine to be walking around public you mm -hmm. know without her hair perfectly cropped right. and makeup yep. all perfectly yep. on and I admire that about her because you know you see so many people today that are just so willing to get right. so wrapped up in the image and stylists everywhere and I think what you see on the TV show is probably exactly like her. I know it. I think you know it's not that hard to for her to act it because, mm -hmm. like you said, it is her. Mm -hmm. And I think that the biggest news is probably going to have to be the new single every other weekend. Um, you've heard it. What are your you know what were what was your first reaction when you heard that song? I guess my first reaction to hearing that song was. I was thinking that on behalf of the songwriter, what a great idea of the song, because how many people fit into that situation where, I mean, I think if, if I polled our audience, probably maybe 50% of the people are in situations where, you know, they have children, they have uh, uh, different parents, um, you know, one parent lives somewhere and one parent lives somewhere else, and, and they have to share them and work that out and still maintain that relationship with that, uh, that person that, you know, that they're no longer married to. And how how many people can relate to that, and how many people hear that song, and are thinking, wow, you know, that's me, that's the situation I'm in. And of course, uh, Skip Ewing, I've always been a fan of his, a great songwriter and um, and singer, and I think just the package is just terrific. I know, actually, I have heard both the Kenny and the Skip Ewing version, mm -hmm. and I enjoy the Kenny, but the Skip Ewing version, it was my first experience with Skip Ewing right. ever, and his voice on it is just so powerful and I don't know if it was the fact that he had written the song as well but mm -hmm. I could feel his entire I could actually feel the heart being ripped out of him yeah. as he's singing those lyrics and it's complimented so beautifully which is really a testament to Reba McIntyre and Tony Brown's production of mm -hmm. the song with the strings and right. it's just a beautifully terrific song and you're also the music director here mm -hmm. at WCTY and I was wondering you know what effects when you're going to add the song and how many times it gets played. I mean, like, what, are, what factors go into well, that Well, one of the things that we do, and I do the morning show as well, and we do a program that we call uh, Make It or Break It, where we play a song and our listeners call in and tell us, you know, whether they like the song or not, and we count up all the votes, yes, like, no, don't like. Um, and we had it on Make It or Break It, um, and, uh, and it was almost all 100% positive. So that, I think that's a good indicator that we'll be adding that song soon. How many, I mean, what effects, like, what, is there any kind of criteria about, like, what time of day you play the songs, typically? I mean, I you can only imagine, like, there has to be some reasoning behind, like, say, we're going to add the song during morning drive or afternoon rush. If we add a song, it plays in all day parts. And really the number one criteria for adding a song to our playlist is a feeling in my gut that the song is going to be a top ten song. I don't, if a song is not going to make it into the top ten, chances are if I have a feeling that it's not going to make it into the top ten, then we probably won't add the song. So, what 
to what really dictates I mean listeners and our you know forum browsers everyone talks about requesting the mm-hmm. importance of requesting what role does requesting play in keeping a song on the radio it's all kind of part of the buzz you know if if people are calling and requesting a song you know that there's an interest out there and it's kind of like the squeaky wheel it's just a small part of that squeaky wheel um, so it is it's pretty important and we know that Reba's past single has been, because of you, has been mm-hmm. nominated once again for now an ACM award. Mm-hmm. And is that going to affect, like, maybe you're going to bring back the song a little in it a couple extra times? Does that go into your formula at all, award nominations or performances? No, really, at, at that point in time, after a song has been up and down the charts already, then it's a matter of testing. And radio stations will take songs, and they'll get an auditorium, and they'll fill it with, you know, maybe... 300 people or something, and and they will play for those 300 people 500 songs, and the people that are in the auditorium will you know grade them on a scale of one to ten, and then the radio station might pick the you know the the highest testing songs will be the ones that they continue to play more often in, a, in some kind of category. So that's how that works. It's a, um, awards and requests at that point in time don't mean don't mean anything. How about I know that I get. I signed up for Media Base, which we check frequently, mm-hmm. and I sometimes get like rate the music kind yeah. of surveys. Do, I mean, how does that work? When that's I important. That's part of testing. Yes, that's research. So we use that. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know, many in this business have come and gone, and we've seen many a great singer kind of, you know, come onto the charts and kind of leave. And Reba's really been able to kind of stay on the charts for now, well over 20 years. I mean, what do you personally think has led to this? you know, her success for so many years. She's very smart. She knows how to reinvent herself. She knows how to stay in the public eye. She's versatile. She can do TV and she can do movies and she can do the stage. And um, she's just smart. And that's that's what, and talented, of course she can sing. Um, but she just knows how to continue to reinvent herself. And, and she's a superstar, so that's important. I know, and I think that it's probably helped that she's had the TV show, and yes. she's kind of, I see it as she's kind of invited herself into a new audience, mm-hmm. where, you know, I think other artists have just been able to kind of slip into, you know, the right. back of people's minds. She's always been right there in the forefront. And we are back with Jimmy Lane of WCTY, um, host of the morning show, and also the music director here. Um, you know, the song Find Out Who Your Friends Are with Tracy Lawrence. That was originally released as just a solo, but country radio kind of took it upon themselves to play the version with Kenny Chesney and Tim McGraw. And as we know, the version released for every other weekend was with Skip Ewing. Do you think radio will prefer the Skip Ewing version or the Kenny Chesney version? I mean, if anyone's called in requested it so far, I mean, what are you kind of sensing going on? Actually, you just gave me a great idea. I think if we do play the, the song, we'll probably play the Kenny, Kenny Chesney version of that, because sure, who wouldn't prefer to have two superstars together on one song, and that's the original version from the from the record, so why not? And you're right, what happened with the Tracy Lawrence was radio stations played the version from the album that had um, Kenny Chesney on it, and um, there was a cease and desist, the record labels weren't happy with the radio stations that did that but the radio stations can play anything they want. If it's on the album, it's up to them. So the same thing could probably will happen. So you could technically take any song you wanted from the duet's album and yeah. play it? Sure, of course. That's good information to know. And I just want to thank you so much mm-hmm. for sitting down with me and sitting down with our users there at Fancy Reba. And I want to thank you for your time, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Mike, thank you. And um, everyone, stay tuned to FancyReba.com for all your Reba McIntyre news and entertainment. And stay tuned for the, our weekly webcast. I'm Michael Collins, and have a wonderful day.